Hey guys, welcome back to One Man Op Fishing. I'm Mike. Today we're going to do a video, I hope it's not too echoey in here, I'm still getting used to the acoustics in this house, on how to fish golf courses legally, okay? Um, a lot of times you'll see me out fishing golf courses. Uh, I've just shot a couple of videos right on a golf course. You might not know it's a golf course because I'm wearing the GoPro, but if you see me walking, you'll see that I'm on a golf course. Now that golf course happens to be on the property where I live. So uh, the first way to fish a golf course legally is live in the community. Down in South Florida here and anywhere in Florida, there's thousands of golf courses in this state. I wouldn't be surprised. I don't know how many, but a lot. You know, you can't drive five miles without passing three or four. So obviously if you live on a golf course, you can typically fish it. Usually you have some kind of an ID with you. That works. Um, and of course the, the other option to that is know someone who lives on a golf course. I'm sure you guys have friends um, that live on courses. And if they do, typically, you know, if somebody asks where you live or where you're staying, you can say, I live right there around the corner. And uh, usually that's enough. Now, let me just say this in the beginning. It's obviously a lot easier for me as an older adult male um, to fish golf courses than it is if you're 16, 17, 18, early 20s. Um, you know, you get the Karens that come out and start yelling at you for fishing or the old guys who don't want you in, in behind their house or something. Whereas if they see me, they don't really say anything. I can usually get a pass just because I'm older. I'm not that old, but I'm older. Um, and again, you always see me with my FHP hat. That's the Florida Highway Patrol. And I've got a couple of those um, that I wear that also puts people off. They automatically just assume you're a cop or a Highway Patrol officer or something. And that keeps them quiet a lot of times as well. So those two first things, obviously if you live on one, check it out. A lot of these golf courses down here are fantastic. We all know that there are huge fish living on some of these golf courses because they never get fished. Even the guys who play golf there usually don't fish it because you know they're playing golf. I mean, maybe, but certainly not high pressure lakes. All right, again, the second thing, know someone who lives on a golf course. And everybody knows someone who lives on one of these courses. Another thing you can do, and I'm recently investigating this, there's a place down here called the Carolina Club. I used to golf at this place 20 years ago. Um, it closed. Closed up. They were going to try and build homes or condos or something on this property. So look around and see if there are any golf courses in your general vicinity that might have closed out, especially with all this COVID nonsense. Courses have been closed countrywide. Florida's a little better. They've been able to, able to play down here. So if you find a golf course that's closed, who's going to stop you? You can park and wander right onto that course. And again, you know, fish these little lakes. A lot of times there's big fish. Okay. Uh, third way, you can always just ask the greenskeeper. You know, find someone who's in charge of the course or someone who's out there with some kind of authority and ask permission. The main thing is you want to stay out of people's way. You don't want to be standing where guys are golfing. A lot of times there's a, a lake or a, a access on the golfer's side, but there's all, usually a lot of access on, the, on an opposite side where the golfers aren't going to be hitting the ball. You might be able to get on that side, and as long as you stay out of people's way and no ball's going to hit you in the head, the greenskeeper won't mind. So you could always ask permission. Now, I know it's much more fun when you don't have permission. You know, when you're out there and you're sneaking, you know, it's like, that's why I call this one man op. You know, when you're out there sneaking around on golf courses or into places you shouldn't be, it's kind of hard if there's five of you or if you've got a boat behind you or something or you're pulling even a kayak. Um, but if you're just on foot, you can get right into all these office parks and communities and pretty much go uh, undetected, undetected and unmolested. So ask the greenskeeper. That's always a good way to do it, just right up front. The worst he can say is no. Okay, you've been told. Five minutes away is another golf course, okay? Um, private courses. Again, if there's uh, a lot of times these privately owned courses that are not public, uh, you, again, you can get permission. A lot of times they'll think you're a member. Act like you belong there. If, you, if it's a private course, um, and you have access to it through a community, when you're out there, don't act like you're hiding. Act like you absolutely belong. Just plant yourself. Little confidence goes a long way. Um, that always works. Again, in South Florida, we have a lot of courses. Again, another way you can do it is you could always get a job there. Um, there's a very kind of a famous course down here in Plantation called Jacaranda, which, and there's a lot of different Jacaranda names, but Jacaranda, 
um, has a nice, very nice golf course. It's a very big community. Uh, it's been in plantation for many years and people know the name. And years ago, uh, my younger brother and his best friend, Ron, worked uh, not on the golf course, but they worked in the restaurant. Okay, so they got to know the guys who ran the golf course. And what these guys would do is they would uh, jump in a golf cart from the, the restaurant and they would drive it over to the maintenance area where all the, uh, the greenskeeper was and all the guys who maintained everything. And they got to know these guys. And we would go fishing there. And the bass fishing was absolutely insane. They would let us fish behind their building because otherwise you could be seen and they didn't want it getting out. They were allowing us to fish. But we would fish right behind their maintenance shed. And it was, was a big, it was like an acre of land, maybe more, that they had all these buildings on. And they maintenance all the golf carts there. And we used to just slay the fish behind this building. And this was probably mid-90s, okay? And another thing you could always do um, is if you're a golfer, and again, this is obviously if you're a little older, you could always just pack a rod when you go golfing. If there's a place that you golf, um, whether you're an amateur, uh, young amateur, or, or a little older, maybe in your 20s, 30s, or even 50s, okay, you could always play a course and bring a rod and reel with you and sort of fish it while you're golfing, you know, or you could just get lost off the course and go do something. That's kind of a stretch, but, um, but it, it can be done. I've seen guys who have done that, who have brought, you know, a, a, not a seven foot rod, but maybe a six foot medium action rod with a, a little bait casting reel. Because listen, uh, some of these smaller lakes on these courses have lunker fish in them. You don't necessarily have to have a large lake to have big fish. I've caught three, four, five pound fish in lakes that are just three, four acre lakes. Very small little, actually more like a pond. Um, you know, we got a pool and a pond. Pond would be good for you. All right, so let's go through them again. You can ask the greenskeeper, okay? Ask for permission, whether it's the greenskeeper or someone else in charge, okay? Again, you can live on a course or find someone who lives on the course, get permission that way. Track down a private course where, again, you can get permission. You don't have a ton of people coming through. Maybe you know someone who plays there. You can say, hey, Mr. Anderson plays here, uh, blah, blah. He may know the greenskeeper well or know somebody at the course, that kind of a way. Um, you can work at it. You can get a job there or, again, have a friend who works there. You guys go schmooze the other guys that are around. I'm sure these guys come in to eat occasionally in these restaurants. And that's a good way. It just depends on how serious you are about your bass fishing, okay? Um, and, of course, the last way and maybe the, the last ditch way to play on these courses, and this one used to always work for me. Again, you can always you know, offer a little green to whoever's out there. Go out there and start fishing. If somebody comes up, you know, if you know there are big fish there, just do it, it's just the cost of doing business. It's like when you go out and you buy artificial baits and lures. That's what it takes to fish. So if there's a place that you know has big fish, okay, and you really want to fish it and they won't let you or you've tried, you could always try the federal green to, uh, to just grease whoever is out there to let you play, okay? Those are just a couple. Um, Obviously, there are more than that. Uh, and of course, you don't have to worry about any of these if you're just going to sneak onto the course. But there's always that chance that you get spotted by a golfer and they call it in or you know, someone driving around on a cart spots you and they ask you to leave. And again, if that happens, just leave. Don't make a scene. Don't, don't cause a tr any trouble. There's a ton of videos on YouTube of these guys getting kicked out of uh, home area, you know, people would better live around lakes, homes, golf courses, and usually they just go, but sometimes something happens and they get all worked up and the cops get called, the cops come throw you out. There's no need for any of that. Again, Mike here with One Man Op Fishing, and I will see you guys next time.